always thrilled to have you here, Al Michaels. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate you know, I, that. I would, I would have dressed up. Yes. And so I want you to pardon me for looking like, you know. I'm yeah, you, I'm, you're, I'm, you're dressed in a full-on well, I'm going to, I'm going to the, I have to go to physical therapy at the end of the show here, so I needed to get ready for that. Uh-huh. And uh, I wore my 15-year-old New Balance yes. kicks. You got it working here. I am the only guy in America who does not have a shoe deal, so that's yeah. why I... <laughs> I came with these. So are you? Are you okay? Are we get. We, you're, you're yeah, I'm just going to get a little. You know, a little spinal tune stenosis, up. and you know, get the get a little, uh, whatever I get. Mm -hmm. Open up the uh, whatever the, okay. the, the arteries. Okay. And away we. But I'll, I'll make the rest of the show. You gotta, don't worry. Okay. You're. 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 I think. We don't need to put you on the injury report for. You're uh, probable. Desi you're designated probable? to return in the second segment. <laughs> Al Michaels joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Where do the Cardinals rank amongst teams that you have personally eyeballed this year, Al? They have as good a chance as any team to win the Super Bowl. Now, that got, that was a, a big uh, uh, loss yesterday when Ty Matthew went down for the season because he's great. Mm -hmm. And so he is gone, and, you know, he, he made the interception at the end of the game on Sunday night. Yeah. Uh, Non-contact, kind of walked off the field. We were hoping for the best, but... That's a big loss for them, but uh, it's a, a great team, extremely well coached. They really got everything together. I mean, Carolina, I, I'm a believer now. I mean, they're 14 and 0. You don't get to 14 and 0 and and just luck into it. They've got a great thing going. I mean, Cam Newton to me is the is the MVP. Ron Rivera is the coach of the year. You've got Davis and Keekley who are as fine a pair of linebackers as you'll see. So, I mean, they could win it. Obviously, I think the Cardinals could win. It. I mean, the Cardinals really have a good Thing going, and here's Carson Palmer in his what 12th year in the league, and maybe it's his best. So uh, they're right there again. It's a matter of staying healthy. You saw what happened to them last year, exactly. nine and one. Not only did they lose Palmer, they lost Drew Stanton, who was playing pretty well. They had no running backs at the end of the year. Uh, instead of having maybe the number one seed, you know, down the stretch, they they faded, had to go to Carolina, all banged up. So again, that Ty Matthew thing is is pretty big, but the, the Cardinals are definitely a major contender. And you also called Seattle's last loss ever since uh, they lost to Arizona on Sunday night. They have been yeah. spectacular. They have. so you can't. I mean, can't discount them. I because I, no. because they're they're probably going to go. There's no problem. I think they're going to go to the NFC East winner most likely, and most likely mark their territory there. And right. then move on to either Arizona or Carolina. Right. That's what I think that's the way things are shaping up in the NFC right now. And, and you give them a ton of credit, too, because, I mean, you lose Marshawn Lynch. Maybe he comes back. You lose Thomas Rawls, who had been playing very well. You lose Jimmy Graham and make the big offseason trade. The offensive line ha had been in a little bit of, uh, of flux and not disarray, but they've gotten that together right now. Wilson, of course, has been spectacular, spectacular but tremendous. Defensively, they, sh they have shored things up. And, you know, every year you always say, well, this is the team you don't want to face in the playoffs. So, so obviously right now everybody is talking about two teams you don't want to face, Seattle and Pittsburgh. Yes. But you know, I don't think you want to face Arizona or Carolina either when it gets to the playoffs. Or New England and Gillette, I mean, you know, which, again, is where, which is where, you know, it looks like that's what's going to happen in the AFC. Of course, the road to the Super Bowl is going to go through Foxborough again. I mean, it's gigantic. I mean, if you get the bye, as, as you well know, if you're number one, you, you don't play three games, you play two, and you never leave home. And every time the Patriots have gone to the Super Bowl, they had the bye week. So the right. other way you could put it is every time they get the bye week, they make the Super Bowl. Correct. It's another way that you can put it. But it's interesting you mentioned Pittsburgh as that team that you don't want to face. And that was a team that you had on the schedule. You flexed out of it because they were playing Baltimore right. and, and flexed into it, the Giants and Vikings. And now here we go. You're going to be spending a lot of time talking about Odell Beckham Jr., even when I think, you know, you're assuming right now you're not going to have him in, uh, right. in, in a uniform. Right, unless he wins Sunday. the appeal, and I can't imagine he's going to win What'd the appeal. What do you think of all that? I agree with, with the consensus. I mean, I'm watching the game in my hotel room in Philadelphia and you know, watching uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, and they, they were right on top of it. And the minute that Troy started to talk about they shouldn't be throwing him out of the game, it's exactly what I'm thinking at that point. I was, like everybody else, astonished that the officials did not, A, either throw him out of the game or, B, at least, hey, guys, here's the deal. You keep this up, you're both going, or you're going, and, and one guy or the other is going. But I was stunned, and I was shocked, too, because uh, Terry McCauley's one of the best officials in the league, one of the best refs. It's not all on him. I mean, he has other guys that he's working with. 
We're all seeing the replays of what's taking place. And at a certain point, I thought, you know, you got to go to the guys or go to, you know, to Coughlin and Rivera and say, if this doesn't stop, the next time he's out or he's out of there, both out of the game. So I was astonished that it got to that point. We, we all saw what took place the other day. Not at all surprised that he got suspended, and I'd be surprised if they uh, overturned that suspension. Have you ever seen anything like that? I mean, well, we, ha we you know we have, but the guys have either been thrown out of the game, but not not to that level, and with, with that frequency too, where you saw it at the beginning of the game, and then it just kept on going, and then of course it gets exacerbated at the end by the helmet to helmet shot that uh, Beckham took on Norman. So at a certain point, you went, well, wait a second. You, you have to talk to these guys. In no other sport would that be allowed to get to that point. I mean, hockey, basketball, you name it. Baseball, you know, the, the, the umpires go to the, the dugouts, warn the managers, warn the pitcher or whatever. So I've never seen it last. That lasted the whole game. Yeah, it did. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, with, at least Beckham did. Norman right. at some point stopped. Back, right, and Ron Rivera off. said that the refs did go to him, and we assume Coughlin, too, saying, hey, knock it off. Yeah. But the thing that also surprised me is that the, here's a player on Tom Coughlin's team, right? Yeah. The law and order guy. Yeah. The guy who's like, if you're five minutes early, you're late. Yeah. Yep. And that, and that after the game, he said he needed to have Odell learn on the job to deal with this stuff. That one just didn't ring to no. me yeah. in a way. The same way that you're looking at the refs with Terry McCauley. It's the two guys that normally you'd think of McCauley and, yeah. and Coughlin. That would yeah. handle this thing. It's I think seen... I think everybody who knows football and knows, you know, the inside of the game and and, know, and knows these people personally. That was the stunning part of it. You know, a, a very good officiating crew, very good referee, Tom Coughlin, Ron Rivera. You thought it's at a certain point. Well, wait a second, this has to stop. So, the fact that it went as far as it did, that was stunning. Yeah. I've got Al Michael sitting here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. <clears throat> and so uh, what do you think is happening with Peyton Manning right now? There's a lot of conversation Oof. about him yeah. and his future. And you know him very well. You, sure. He may, be, he may be along with Favre, the quarterback you've yeah. interviewed pregame the most with Brady, right? And, if you and admired put them up on and really respected. And, sure. And kind of like, you know, we're not supposed to root. But, you know, you root for certain guys. And, I mean, Peyton's just had a wonderful career. He's been great for the game. Uh, terrific. You know, he's... He's everything that you, you would want in a, in a football player and, he, and, a, and in a human being, too. So you're rooting for him. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where he is physically. Uh, can he play? I mean, you know, the, the Denver situation is fascinating right now. They could wind up not only as, as the third seed, they could wind up as five or six. They could wind up seven. Well, Al, it's possible if they lose Monday night and Kansas City doesn't lose, yeah. they could be seven when it's all said it's, and done. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird the way this thing is played out in, uh, in Denver, and especially with, uh, that defense is so good, and they build up a big lead in Pittsburgh and then give that up. So uh, the Denver thing, you know, this is why we love football. I was thinking driving over here today. You know what it is, Rich? There are 168 hours in a week, you know, mm -hmm. seven times 24. I, mean, I got that straight. Yeah. You know, I learned okay. in the fifth grade. And I haven't forgotten. The, a football game is played three of those 168 hours, your, you know, your team's game. And then the, so the other 165 hours, apart from sleep, have to be filled with something. And the NFL has now become an around the clock, around the calendar year, around the, you know, the, the year, uh, 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 conversation, national conversation, mm -hmm. because of things like this. What are we talking about all week long? We're talking about Beckham this week. We're talking about uh, uh, Will Manning play. So there are so many stories, and that gets us through the week. It's not like baseball where there's a game every night and you talk about did your team win or lose, but then there's a game the next night. This is why football is so interesting. I mean, there are only 16 games a season, plus preseason, then you know, maybe if you make, your team makes postseason. And here we are. It's a 365-day conversation piece. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, we could have been talking about after the, the Eagles beat the Patriots about what a monster win that was for sure. Chip Kelly and what a shocker that was. But instead, we talked about DeMarco Murray's plane ride home sitting next to the owner. There you go. That took up the oxygen in the room for the entire week. Sure, sure. You know, that's the way it works. And fifth grade, that was the grade that your mom pulled you out to go to Hollywood Park. Racing, to Hollywood course, Park. Yeah, right. okay. that, that was the sixth grade. Oh, sixth grade. And when we come back, we'll talk about the future of Los Angeles football with Al Michaels right here. And I also want to ask you about Pete Rose, sure. who you know very well. Mm -hmm. uh, Al Michaels is right here on the Rich Eisen Show. We're back in 60 ticks of the clock. If you're on hold at 844-204, Rich, keep holding. We'll take your calls. So to come here on the Rich Eisen Show. The week-to-week -week player of the week's coming up. Stu to come here on the Rich Eisen Show. We've got Al Michaels here 
in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Um, so the uh, Peyton Manning reference that I made before wasn't just to get your thoughts on Peyton Manning. I did hear you on Dan Patrick's show calling me the Peyton Manning of, of the media because of the number of commercials that you've seen me on, Al. You sure that was me? I think that was I think that was you. You were you were you were talking about my my Chris's who were on the air too with my well, my commercials. You know, that the we've thing seen. is when you go to Dan's show, there's yes. no food, there's no makeup. Ah. So I was probably a little loopy that day. <laughs> but you guys have it but both here. I had a got, nice breakfast sandwich. I'm in the green room. Yes. I've got makeup. It's perfect. So we <laughs> we we rolled the carpet out for you is what you're it. saying and, and dan just throws you out there well you know dan and the, the poor danettes sit there and they don't get paid and you know dan takes I all like the money and, you know, i love this the whole thing this is fantastic so you're very collegial with the guys because no, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm talking berries i'm talking flowers you know sure. that's the way i roll the here thing. on the rich eisen show it. out helps keep the lights on um so let's talk los angeles football here because we are uh, a less than a month away from a supposed vote that I think nobody knows there's the outcome, and that includes every single set of hands that will be raised or not in that room right now. Is there any sense that you have about what's gonna happen with this vote in you Los know, Angeles? It's the same thing as has been going on now for months. I have people inside asking me what I'm hearing from other people. Uh, and I'm, you know, I know a lot of the owners, I know a lot of the principals involved in this, I know a lot of the people involved on the city end. Rich, this thing just, moves from here to here to here to here. So there's a vote, and I still can't get an answer as to, are they gonna vote for a site, Carson or Inglewood, or are they gonna vote to allow a team to come or teams to come? Mm -hmm. I don't know what the vote is. And I have to tell you something. I know some people who'll be in that room, and I've asked them that same question in the last couple of weeks, and they can't answer it. So I don't, there's, to me, I'm not saying it's disarray, but I think, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Well, I really I, don't. And I mean, that, that's very interesting. I mean, what, for instance, what do you do if, if they somehow approved Inglewood and then approved only the, the, the Chargers? I mean, the Chargers and the Raiders have kind of, you know, made a, a, a deal to go to Carson. We know that St. Louis, because Stan Kroenke owns the Rams, has Inglewood. So... I don't know what's going to happen here. It's 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 very interesting, and even the, some of the principals I think are wondering, you know, what is what is going to take well, place. Well, I mean, I was in St. Louis with NFL Network last week. Everybody in that building thought that was it for the Rams, and you saw at the end of the Chargers game. I don't know if you were able to see that because you were in Philadelphia getting the standing set for the broadcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Eric Weddle's lying on the ground there. Now that part of me, part of it may be that he thinks he's gone from the Chargers. Period. But Philip Rivers got all misty afterwards yeah. and and he was signing he, he he walked off the field without his cleats on because he took them off and signed them for the fans as he was signing autographs for darn near an hour after the yeah. game yeah and so you're seeing all of that and then the, in today's los angeles times for for the listening audience and viewing audience too there's this big article about what stan Kroenke is building and that Englewood site right near lax sure it, it's he's building something and it's either going to have a stadium or it won't. They're mm -hmm. moving dirt around right now. They, they are. In Los Angeles. Not, not very far from here. Right. Uh, as we know. Uh, I think that, well, that's when, if you build a stadium these days and you have the land, uh, I think the template was kind of set by Phil Anschutz and AEG when they built Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles mm -hmm. in the late 90s and then bought a lot of the land around it and turned it into what is now LA Live. So you've got a theater uh, that, that hosts a lot of award shows and concerts. Staples, a lot of restaurants. I mean, it's become a very vibrant uh, facility, not just the Staples Center itself. And I think when you when you go to uh, a situation right now where you want to build a stadium, and they've done that in Foxborough too, when you know Bob Kraft uh, built uh, the Gillette Stadium, and they've turned it into a Patriot hotel place. and a, a restaurant, Patriot gosh, Place, yes. Hall of Fame, and all the rest. And I think that's what everybody has in mind right now. Stan, of course, you know Stan Kroenke uh, is not only uh, a sports owner, sports team owner, and he owns a number of teams, including the Arsenal soccer team in, uh, in, in England, but he's a real estate developer. He understands that end of the business as well as anything else. So, you know, I don't know whether they could actually just develop that without a stadium or not. I don't know. But it's going to be pretty fascinating heading down, uh, heading down to the finish line here. I've got Al Michaels here on the Rich Eisen Show. Long time Reds broadcaster. I did three From years with the Reds in the early 70s. In yes. the day. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of Pete Rose, the latest with the, the commissioner upholding the lifetime ban and his reaction 
to it. Yeah, you know, I, to me, I just think it's sad, and you, you and I have discussed this in the past, and, you know, it's in my book, which I love, is so prominently displayed right on the there. desk over This is really fantastic. There you go, yes. Uh, good, Chris, good Christmas gift. Yes, it is. <laughs> Of all the athletes I've covered in my in my life, I mean, I would rank Pete as number one. I covered him for three years, so every at bat, you know, traveled with him, and and I just loved the fact that it, it didn't matter whether it was a spring training game, which I saw him play plenty of, or the seventh game of the World Series, which I was with him in 1972 when they lost to the A's. He went about it the same way. It was a hundred percent. It was all out, and to the point where I told some people recently when I would get to Riverfront Stadium when I'm doing the Reds in those years, the first thing I would do is to go by Pete's locker in the clubhouse because there was such an energy field that, that emanated from, from that area. And when Joe Morgan got traded from Houston to Cincinnati in 72, what Sparky Anderson did is he moved Joe's locker next to Pete so that some of that would, would uh, feed off uh, to Joe. And that's Pete, you just felt very alive around Pete, and then to see this happen, I mean, you know, look, he, it was uh, self-destruction uh, in a way. <sighs> you know, it looks like he'll never, he, he, he'll, you know, he's out of baseball forever, he's on Fox now doing television. Uh, I guess he won't be in the Hall of Fame, but in my, you know, in my mind, he's one of the greatest players of all time, so he doesn't have the plaque, but you can't, it doesn't diminish what he did as a player, it's just sad what happened to Pete in his afterlife. Yeah, but do you think, just knowing him, that he would have bet on the team as a player. Do you think that, Al? Just Maybe. I, you know, I don't know. They sort of have the evidence that indicates that Because that that's he it did. for me. That, that, that's it. You know, yeah, what, I know. What he it's, did as a manager is one it, thing. It was a demon. Look, I was with Pete, mm -hmm. and there's a story in my book about, you know, I love to go to the racetrack. And we, we, went, to, we went to the horse, race, uh, horse racing facility at Florida Downs. We then went to Derby Lane for Greyhound Racing, and then we went back into Tampa that night. We stopped at the Highlight Fronton. Now, but you know, for me, it was a lot of fun, and it, we, we, you know, it was it, it was great, and it was you know, I was, I was young. I'm doing the Reds. I'm going hanging around with you know Pete Rose, and uh, we had Bob Herzl, one of our writers, was with us too. You know, it was fun. But for Pete, he needed this all of the time. He needed to be at a racetrack. He needed to be in a card game. He needed action. And uh, it finally got him into trouble. Al Michaels trouble. here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you do you have time for one more segment, or do you got to? Where am I going? I don't know. Physical well, I'm therapy. I'm going to physical therapy. I got to make sure that not until you, know, uh, you know an hour. From last now, thing so. I need is to have oh, fine. you know I should Sunday check, night football that you yeah. know you're check you're the, suddenly check the 405 North as long as it's you know. I will make sure. Right on the cigarette right now. No, I can okay. check on check, it. Check on 405.com if there's such a thing. All right, uh, let's take a break. We're back with more with Al Michaels. Your phone calls are still to come. Same with David Aldrich. I promise you that. We'll take your phone calls and give you an update on what's going on in the world of sports. That's all on this edition of the Rich Eisen Show. Don't move. It's an honor to, have to uh, go through my makeup award with you here. This is a made-up award that we oh, have here on the Rich Eisen Show. No, 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 not Denise. That's not, not makeup Denise. Denise. Okay. No, we make this up. Player, it's a, it's a, as you know, it's a week-to-week -week league, Al. One week you're in the, in the outhouse. Next week you're in the penthouse. Correct. Stat-related. Completely stat related. It's exactly week yeah. to week player mm -hmm. of the week. Al Michaels right. is going to help us with this one. Right. Okay. Week to week player of the week. Case Keenum is a nominee. For instance, week 14, he had 124 pass yards. This week, he beats the Bucks in the mustard uniforms. Mustard versus yeah, ketchup. Yeah, mustard against ketchup. Yeah. So yeah. A couple dimes in that game, too. He did. So that's Danny Woodhead. He's a nominee for week right. to week player of the week. Right. Week 14, just three carries for five rush yards, three receptions for eight yards. Week eight, four total touchdowns. He's the week-to-week -week player of the week. Same guy, same uniform, same pads. Mm -hmm. But we, we're just, this is just, we're narrow focused here, Al. And then Deshaun Jackson. Two catches, 43 yards, week 14. Six catches, 153 yards, and a touchdown. Who would you give the award to, Al? First blush. I would not give it to the NFL marketing department. Before we get to the award. This has right? nothing to do with the NFL marketing department. This <laughs> is well, we, have to, we have to start with mustard against ketchup. They've got to stop that nonsense. <laughs> I mean, that is so Bush League, minor league garbage. 
nonsense. Stop it already. But do you uh, like the uniforms, Al? I love those uniforms. <laughs> I mean, this is when the marketing yuppies run wild. You know, it's like crazy stuff. Stop it. I have a new, I have a new fantasy oh, league please. team name. Marketing yuppies. Marketing yuppies. Marketing yuppies. Marketing, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Here's the player, and then we and just yuppies is an old, old phrase, but you know, millennials, whatever the hell you want to call the it. Player, I mean, stop it already. And now this goes the other there way around. Go. From the, from yeah, the if penthouse to the you're really get me going. You know? Color rush is, <laughs> color rush could be the week to week player of the week. But here we go. The week, week to week player of the week. Okay. So you go, week. it can go the other way out. Sure it can. Go the other way. Eddie Lacy, for instance. Week 14 of the hero. Yep. Week 15, practically zero. Right. You know what I mean? Right. AJ Green. AJ Green is another week to week player of the nominee. Week 14, 132 receiving yards and a score against Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Week 15, just one catch. What happened to him? And then, are we really going to do yeah, this? Yeah, we're doing this. The nominee is Steve Harvey. Week 14, he did not host Miss Universe. Week 15, he did. And it did not go well. And it did not go well. <laughs> what do you think, Al? I think the NFL marketing department <laughs> wins this award. <laughs> for, for sure, the marketing yuppies. You know, when I heard about this Steve Harvey thing, and they were, I guess they went opposite us on Sunday night. Yeah, I, I thought they. I thought it was planned. Oh, we're gonna talk about that. I love watching. We're talking Steve. their language. I, I love said. watching Steve Harvey. I mean, he he makes me laugh like crazy. We'll on be Family back TV. in a second. He's great. But the NFL marketing department wins the week to week. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Al Michaels is here. David Aldridge still to come. If you're holding, we're gonna take your calls in a matter of moments here on the Rich Eisen Show. Don't don't hang up. Um, don't hang for up for the television audience. It's, it's the name of a song, you know. To show you how long I've been around. Yes. The Orlans. The <laughs> don't hang up. I like no, it. No, don't you do it now. So you got that to play out for Del Tufo? You have five minutes to figure that one there out. There you go. Okay. We're back uh, up by 19. The TV audience just was regaled. Uh, I'd love to give you the floor uh, for the radio audience. You loved the color rush uniforms on Thursday Night Football, oh, right? Oh, please. Bucks I mean, and, and the know, Rams. How much money do you need to make? I mean, look, they, all this stuff happens because you want to put teams in more uniforms and and somebody said the other day, this is like the eighth different uniform. I think it was the ninth different Rams well, uniforms I mean, in 13 already. games. If you're a St. Louis Rams fan that bought a color rush uniform and your team's never going to play in your city again, like, come on, there what, you are we, go. what are we doing? What, are we, what are we doing? They discounted next week. So mustard versus ketchup? You don't want to call them mustard, mustard versus ketchup? Whatever game? it is. I mean, how Bush League did that look? Seriously. You were there. <laughs> come on. There. I was there. Come on. When they threw a flag on the field, I thought the Rams dropped the towel. Right. Uh, the Bucks the hand towel was better like, than their regular ones. Well, and then it was a challenge flag. I thought the right. Bucks dropped a hand yeah. towel. So, uh, and also, um, we discussed briefly in their television break, Steve Harvey yeah. uh, with the Miss Universe. Did you ever have you ever had a moment anything close to that in your broadcasting career? Read something off the prompter that was incorrect. There's some, anything nothing, like that on live no, TV? No, oh. nothing that would really, you know, get every uh, Twitter to explode. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's another thing. As long as I'm doing a fourth segment, I really I might as well really let it all hang what out. Uh -oh. What does it mean when Twitter explodes? It means <laughs> like for three minutes, nine guys go, you know, what an idiot this guy is, and then it explodes. I mean, what are we talking about? Here? No, I think oh, it just exploded. Out. Excuse Al, me, Al. Do you remember the days when yeah. there was a problem with a flight? You would write a letter to an airline. Oh, remember right, those days? Yeah, I did that a couple of times okay. too. <laughs> my dad, and then I get dad, a form letter back. Right. My dad is in the Hall of Fame of letter writing, by the yep. way, to airlines. Mm -hmm. And the airlines would consider one letter. A yeah into a thousand complaints or something like that. Twitter might be the same well, thing, just, look, where one tweet means... K Kurt Gowdy, who I love, the great uh, broadcaster from, from many years ago, uh, rest in peace, he was fantastic. In the days before the internet and you know social media, blah, 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 anti-social media, in the days before <laughs> all of this stuff, yes. Kurt used to go, you know, if the, if the network would get two letters to say that Kurt Gowdy really stunk after he did like a Super Bowl, that was a barrage. Three letters was a deluge. Mm -hmm. So here we are in you know 2015 or whatever year we're in right now. It's the same thing. But I'm hearing you make mention to what's on social media. I mean, you're, well, are I'm you aware, looking? I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, but I'm looking at it, you know, with the, as they said in, he used to say in Hawaii, a makapia eye or a jaundiced eye or whatever. <laughs> I'm going, come on, I get what this thing is, right? You know. But so I, I can't get you an at Al Michaels Twitter account. Are you kidding me? Look. They try to, and at NBC, they want everybody to have a Twitter account. So yes. Bob Costas and I are the last of the holdouts. We're the only two guys left with flip phones. Now, Bob has a flip phone only. At least I, have, I carry a phone, flip phone in my yes. back left pocket, and I, I do have an iPhone in my right pocket. So I'm back and forth. So, what, what's with so, the flip? so okay. Bob and I are the last guys to, to hold out against a Twitter account. Twitter only gets you in trouble. 
So I, I finally said, you know, every once in a while, you'd get the woman from uh, our marketing department calling, you know, can you do this? Da, da, da. And I said, you have to understand something. I'm not even that interested in what I think. Why would anybody else be? She said, okay, I get it. We're not going to bug you anymore. But people love to know what you think. I don't care. Because, <laughs> because I don't care what I think. And I, what, what happens is you say something mm -hmm. in, you know, 28 characters, whatever the hell you're allowed to, to put in there, mm -hmm. and then they don't understand it, and then that gets retweeted, and, well, you know, I'm going, who needs this nonsense? He sounds like Chip Kelly. Do you have that, Chip? Do you remember? I asked Chip Kelly what people, what, there are a lot of people who are wondering what he thinks. He could and care less. He, he, just what he said. What do you think, Bella? would say. That's what he said. I don't think about what I think as much as you think about what I think. <laughs> so that's great. So that's your that's a great line. That's your thoughts on, on Twitter. That's a great but line. But you're not out there looking at it sometimes? I or? hear about it. You hear about it. I know it. enough people. Costas tells you about it because no. Costas is looking. No, Bob, Bob's always reading about you know, Bob's reading about himself in newspapers. <laughs> 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 they ripped me, and they ripped me in the Waterloo bazooka. I can't believe this guy ripped me. You know, I, I love Bob. We, Bob and I, we've laughed about this for a million years. I bet. Yeah, I mean, we both gotten great press through the years. Once in a while, somebody will write something, you want to go, get out of here. You know. Al, you are the best, sir. Have a I great should. flight out to uh, Minnesota. You have a great flight to Oakland. I, yes, I will <laughs> enjoy that. Uh, have a happy holidays to you, you and Linda. Happy New Year also to and you and your the great entire suits. family. The great suits. Thank you. I the appreciate boys. that. Yep. Yeah, and the boys as well. I appreciate Al. that. And the girls. And you want to the quick ask him the poll, poll question, Rich Eisen oh, Show. Charles Woodson announced he was retiring yesterday. Did it to two beat reporters in his locker. Okay, whose retirement announcement style do you like best? We have a minute. Charles Woodson, Kobe Bryant, a quarter into the season decides he sucks and oh, decides to put out a letter. You're terrible. Or David Ortiz, four months before the year, video logo farewell tour. Uh, oh, but you should talk about Charles Woodson, though. A classy which, guy. Which one Love, do you prefer? Right, you know. like, which, which style, which style of announcement prefer? do you prefer? I think the way Woodson did it. You, know, you don't announce it be, you know, before the season. or Look, I've had guys talk about, I'm going to play five more years. Who cares? First of all, you have no idea if you're going to play five more years, one more year, or ten more years. We know that. <laughs> So, see, you kept me for a fifth segment, you'd be off the air. I'm this, telling no, you. this is great. So, Al would prefer, Al would prefer that you, you tweeted out your retirement. If I'm no, not mistaken. No, no farewell tour for Al then, right? No, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> After this show, they're level to put me on one. Okay. Thank you, Al. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.